Rafa Nadal and Carlos Alcaraz. On the one hand, a phenomenal athlete at the end of his career. On the other hand, a phenomenal athlete at the very beginning of his career, both from Spain, of course, and that is just one of the reasons why people compare them. And I find comparisons always a little difficult to say, oh, he's the next Nadal. Uh, I think Carlos Alcaraz is the first Carlos Alcaraz because Rafa Nadal is unique as a person, as a player, how he plays, how he thinks, completely unique as is Carlos Alcaraz. What you can compare, of course, are their strokes. And that is what I want to do today. Many, many, many a video has been made about the Rafa Nadal forehand. I also made one separately about Carlos Alcaraz's forehand, but seeing them next to each other is really, really phenomenal. And I want to give a huge shout out to Slow Mo Tennis Pro, a YouTube channel that has absolutely fantastic footage because what they've done is they've put both Carlos Alcaraz and Rafa Nadal just right next to each other in one video they made Rafa Nadal a righty that's the one I'm going to use and really done a fantastic job they have court level view of many pros so really check them out I'm going to link their channel down in the descriptions so let's get going with the comparison of Carlos Alcaraz's forehand to that of Rafa Nadal what are the similarities what are the difference and in what situation both of them actually use different finishes. I always start with the grip. And I do wanna say they both have a very, very similar grip. So I know a lot of people are always talking about Rafa's rotation on the ball, and we're assuming that way that he has a super extreme grip. He actually doesn't. He seems to be in a semi-Western grip, and we have the same here for Carlos Alcaraz. So they're definitely not both under the grip here. So a full Western grip would be the underside of the index finger knuckle and the heel pad of the palm on this edge of the racket, and they're not. So they're just over in a semi-Western. Both, of course, non-dominant hand, on the throat and both of course start with a very heavy unit turn and we see that Rafa brings his racket back a little differently and this is due to the tilt of his wrist here so at the top of the take back here we see that Rafa has his arm maybe up a little bit higher and of course the racket face there is a little higher so it's a little above the head and we see that his racket face is actually almost turned upwards whereas Carlos Alcaraz's racket is just facing towards us here. But for both, we see a clear turn past the midline here with the off hand. And that helps with a great unit turn and of course with loading the hips and the shoulder. So then continuing to let this run from the highest point of the take back both have a drop right away. So both have a pretty steep drop and the racket stays to the side of the body of their dominant arm. So we see the racket drop here and Rafa is, and Nadal is almost completely closed and Carlos is maybe a little bit more open. And the second difference that you see here is Nadal's racket drop is lower which can also of course have something to do with the incoming ball so if we're seeing the ball coming in here for colors alcaraz that is definitely a little higher than it is for nadal however i do think he tends to have a little bit of a deeper drop here which gives him of course from a higher take back to a lower drop more distance in which he then can accelerate the racket carlos's racket at this point is maybe not quite tilted folded back as much as Rafa's here but both of course come into a perfect lock in position meaning the butt cap here points to the incoming ball and that 
position just signifies the end of the preparation. Now we're getting into the acceleration. You see both have pretty extended arms, which is also due to the grip. The swing shape is always dependent on the grip. And you see how both hip, torso, and then shoulder come through, and of course the hitting arm as well. Contact point here, out in front. And of course, because we have a slightly different angle here for Rafa, we cannot exactly compare where they have their contact point, but it's for sure out in front of their center of gravity. And then forearm rolls over the ball. We see at contact point for both, the racket face is a little closed. And then on the follow through in an angular motion, See the tip of the racket coming through, very relaxed wrists, but no intentional snapping of the wrist. Yes, we do have the wrist lag here, absolutely, but I can guarantee you they are not deliberately snapping their wrist. So because their hands and their arms are so relaxed, whatever action the wrist has is really dependent on the momentum of the racket pulling it through. And that's why you see that here, they both finish with the racket face, the side of the racket with which they hit facing this way. And we see that a little bit more pronounced for Rafa when he finishes, we can clearly see that. And Carlos's racket is also pointing this way to the outside, maybe not quite as pronounced as Rafa's, but He's definitely not flipping his wrist, neither here at contact point or then on the finish. Now, what I find very interesting in this comparison here, usually we're always thinking of Rafa as having his signature buggy whip. He does finish over his shoulder, over his biceps quite a lot of times. It just depends on what he wants to do with the ball and of course, what the incoming ball gives him to work with. And that's what we're gonna look at at the second comparison. So this is a great example of seeing how a player adjusts depending on the incoming ball. So we see Carlos's initial court position here. And by the height of the bounce, we also can conclude as the ball's coming in here that it's very deep. So what he does is He's moving back to give him some space. And he also adjusts his swing because of that. So he has to get a pretty quick racket drop here and really doesn't have the momentum of his body weight completely going forward. It's actually lifting up a little bit more. And that also leads him to brushing up a little steeper. And guess what? there's the Rafa buggy whip a little bit. So really depending on what the incoming ball is and what he wants to do with the ball. And my guess is at this court positioning here as deep, he wants to get some extra rotation and net clearance on the ball. That's why he's choosing to swing really, really steeply, which leads him to that follow through. So again, not always the same follow throughs. It really is situational. You also notice here, and we see the exact same footwork basically from Rafa Nadal in a second. It's a semi-open stance because again, he cannot move up to the ball or chooses not to move up to the ball. Let's look at Rafa Nadal. Also seeing the court position here and he's also choosing to move back. And again, the ball comes in pretty shallow. So again, I am reading that as a pretty deep ball and he's choosing to drop back, load off his outside leg. And then here we have that signature Rafa follow through. And of course, for both players, the fundamentals stay the same. And we're gonna look at that first in this 
comparison and then we're going to make Rafa a right-hander again. So right here we can run through our checkpoints. Offhand is helping with the unit turn to create a really good coil. And then lock in position here, but incoming ball, the butt cap is being pointed to. Contact point out in front. And then follow through. And the side with which you hit the ball points to the outside. So one other thing here, just to make a note of, we're seeing how low the racket head has dropped. And in this picture here even, I want to venture forth that Carlos actually has a lower racket head drop. And that is because of the height of the incoming ball. So we see that here, incoming ball is just about hip high, whereas Rafa's ball is somewhere around waist high. So again, it's always situational how your swing shape is being produced depending on the incoming ball and what you want to do with that ball. So as I mentioned before, this is probably going to push Carla's further back and puts him under more pressure because that is usually not his preferred swing shape. Usually the vast majority of his shots, he will finish over your biceps, but he is of course such a supreme athlete that he will adjust with a different swing shape and with a different finish.